Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, I just love pickles. Absolutely. Yeah. A couple slices of pickle on, on a hamburger, and it owns the hamburger. Standing alone at the deli with a sandwich and the chips, it stands alone, and it's a taste to be reckoned with. I love pickles. You know, when most people... Mm, you got that aroma, you have the seasonings, oh God. When most people look into a jar of pickles, they see pickles. I see a sermon. <laughs> yes. Think about it. Here are these cucumbers. And out of no fall or grace of their own, they're chosen. They're set apart. They're clean and prepared. And, and then they're, uh, if you will, baptized during work. <laughs> and they come up transformed and, and with just the right amount of flavor, right amount of seasonings. You know, I think the church should have a pickle ministry. <laughs> if you think about it, when you look at the Western church, you have to say, there are a lot of cucumbers who like to get their feet wet, but nothing else. They might go for a swim once in a while, maybe get a little of the aroma and a little of the texture, but they're not quite pickles. And there are pickles. But not every pickle knows they're a pickle. And then there's the cucumbers. And the cucumbers need to know that they don't have to be a cucumber. They could be transformed in a pickle. I think a problem with Christianity is how it's sold or presented. It's presented in a way, not in a transformation, but more in, in muscle memory or self-help. My kids, my, my boys take Taekwondo, right? Yes, yes dad, they do. Uh, and, uh, and they learn these, these routines over and over again, so when they need it, they can do it without thinking about it. You know, kind of a self-help thing. And we don't need the church or Jesus or the Bible for self-help. I've been struggling with something for the last 11, 11 years. When I get up in the middle of the night, you get a drink of water in the kitchen. For the last 11 years, I've been reaching on the wrong side of the doorway for the light. And I kind of grope, and, and I realized, oh, it's over here. For, for the last 11 years. And so, finally I said, you know, this is enough. This is crazy. So I, I changed my behavior. I, 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 I approached the kitchen, thinking ahead that I need to reach to the other side for the light. And by golly, I changed my behavior. And often, Christianity has been approached as a self-help, pull up your boots by yourself and serve the Lord kind of thing. Job was living the dream. He was wealthy. He had seven boys and three daughters. And a lovely wife. And he was living the dream. I mean, he was so wealthy that today he could run for president, and win or lose, he'll still be rich when he's done. He had lots. He's living the dream and loving the Lord. Until one day, 
He lost all his possessions. Everything. And he lost his children. All of them. And then he lost his health. And he was covered with sores from his head to his feet. And one thing he didn't lose his wife was like, Oh, Joe, just curse God and die already. Just die already. <laughs> and that was his helpmate. And then he had three great friends who came to visit to minister to Job in his time of need. And uh, so they come to Job, and after seven days of just hanging out, in silence, they began, and I'm going to do some paraphrasing here and saying, Job, you're a sinner. We know that God blesses the saints and he punishes the sinner. And Job, you're a miserable sinner. You need to repent. Job, you could be living your best life now. All you have to do is, is, is repent and, and find your, your promises in the Bible and stand on those promises. You may have to stamp on your feet, stamp on your feet. You could be living your best life now, Job. Job, have you watched a Disney movie? In all the movies, the virtuous have their dreams come true when they wish upon the star, Job. If you had virtue, you wouldn't be in that place. And Job said, no. I didn't do anything to deserve this. I don't receive this. You know, Jesus knew what it would be like to be Job. Jesus knew what it was to lose friends and loved ones. Jesus knew what it was like to suffer, to be tortured, to be executed in the most painful way in the history of mankind. Jesus knew what it meant to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We worship a God that sympathizes with us, who knows our pain. Job questioned God, and God answered in our Old Testament lesson. But listen. Listen not to the answer to Job, but Jesus answering the questions. Brace yourself like a man, and I will question you, and you will answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations Tell me if you understand who marked off the dimensions. Surely you know. Jesus said, I am the Word made flesh. All creation was made through me. And nothing that has, that's not, there's nothing that has not been created that has not been created through me. Who stretched out the line across it? Or where its foot's footing set? Or who laid the cornerstone? Jesus answers, I laid the cornerstone. And I am the capstone. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. While the morning stars sang together and all angels shouted for joy, 
Jesus said, I am the Word incarnate, born of a virgin, and when I was born, angels shouted for joy. Hosanna in the highest. And who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garments and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed the limits for it. And Jesus answered, I am coming back in clouds of glory. And I will return, I will reign forever, and my kingdom will have no end. And there will be a new heaven, and there will be a new earth. Here is where your proud waves halt. Excuse me. When I said, this is how far you may come and no farther. Here is where your proud waves speaking to the seas halt. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked across the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the shadow of death? And Jesus answers, yes, I have seen the gates of death. I have seen the gates of hell and I have conquered sin and death. I am living water. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Have you comprehended the vast expenses of the earth? Tell me if you know this. When I come back, Jesus says, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, and I will dwell with my people, and I will be with them. And in their flesh they shall see God. Jesus knows. And when we're in the storms of life and when the waves come up and all the bad things that happen, Jesus knows. And he's there. And he is there with us. Jesus says, Behold, I make all things new. Do we really believe God is good? Yeah. Do we relish in that? Jesus is in God's presence. And he calls us to the ministry of reconciling the world to himself. He calls us to be a part of his new creation. So where are you today? Are you sort of a cucumber or sort of a pickle? Do you like to dip your feet in, maybe go for a swim once in a while? Is that, do you feel that that's where you are? But the truth is that God tells us that he will bring to completion the good work that he started in you and me. Allow him. Be immersed in his spirit and allow the transformation to break through. Are you a pickle? And do you know it? We must remind ourselves that we are ambassadors, not of our own goodness, not of our own righteousness, not of our own worthiness, but we're ambassadors of His righteousness, his goodness, his worthiness. And he is worthy. Or are you a cucumber? Do you know God 
as Father. Do you know that you could be adopted in His Sonship? Do you know that you could be transformed and made new? Taste and see today that the Lord is good. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that before the foundations of the earth, you set us apart, you've called us by name, that you desire our presence. So that you sent your son to redeem us. To make a way. To give us the power of sonship. Lord, let your spirit within us cry, Abba, Father. Use us, Lord. Use us. Transform us and use us as you recreate the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen.